Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome this, to this very special uh, Adobe press conference. My name's Craig Teagle, I'm the president of Adobe Japan, and on behalf of all the team, I'd like to welcome you here today. Uh, good morning, and thank you for being here. It's really great to be back in Japan today, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share our strategy with each one of you today. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Shantanu. I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak with you today. And I'm particularly excited to share with you an update on Adobe's Flash platform and the tremendous momentum that we are seeing in enabling content creators to deliver compelling experiences to virtually every device. In order to deliver on this, we have embarked on a mission to recruit and work in partnership with a broad ecosystem of companies across device types, across chipsets, across content, and across operating systems. This industry-wide initiative will enable us to deliver the innovation and proposition of allowing content creators and authors to create once and deliver their content and applications efficiently and most effectively across the broadest range of devices. And give you uh, an update to something that's been in the works now for nearly two years, which is Creative Suite 5. Um, we are very excited about the opportunity we have here in Japan as a market, as well as around the world, um, with a new set of products, with new capabilities and new features that we think are actually dramatic game changers for the design and development community uh, around the world. Um, we're also shipping, uh, somewhat controversial lately, is the fact that we have a, a technology that allows you to create an asset using interactivity in Flash, and then basically recompile that content to be run on an iPhone or iPad. That technology will ship in Creative Suite 5, However, Apple has made it clear that uh, so far they will not approve applications or services that are built using that technology. So it's up to Apple to decide if applications will be supported or not, but we will actually ship that technology in Creative Suite 5. So we have a business in Japan that has been um, growing since about 2004, and we've been focused on the Japanese market for um, probably two years before that, but it's really been a, a great market for us, not because it's just a great business with a lot of great customers, uh, but also because we've been, able to, we've been able to learn from the Japanese market. The second question was about the multi-screen initiative, and uh, you expressed excitement associated with it, and uh, there's certainly a tremendous amount of excitement associated with multi-screen at Adobe. There's no question in our mind that when you think about the next generation of devices that people are going to use to access the internet, uh, it's going to be hundreds of devices by the end of the year. The first focus was around the PC platform and netbooks and smartbooks, and I think we've done a really good job of helping people author for that platform. With Creative Suite 5 uh, and technology that we have called Device Central, we will now allow you to take that content that was originally intended for print and repurpose it across multiple devices. These devices certainly include smartphones, but in addition also includes other devices including tablets, television sets, cable boxes. And, of course, uh, specifically here in Japan, game consoles. So authoring is clearly one part of the multi-screen strategy. The second part of the multi-screen strategy is to make sure that for all of these customers, we now have the ability for them to reliably distribute their information across all of these devices. Again, smartphones is the focus, and with Flash Player 10.1, as Paul mentioned, 
you're going to be able to see the whole power of the internet on smartphones. Uh, we are releasing it in the first half of the year and on multiple devices in the second half of the year. Again, Japan is way ahead of the rest of the market and I think approximately 90% of the phones that are shipped here already support flash in some form. We have tremendous number of partners who are supporting us from uh, hardware manufacturers such as Samsung and LG uh, as well as Motorola and HTC. We have chip manufacturers who will support the multi-screen strategy and enable us to optimize flash including Intel, ARM, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, Broadcom. And most important, all of the content companies that we work with want to see their content on multiple devices. Here also we're certainly working with Sony Sun to make sure that our content is available on Sony, on Nintendo, uh, and as I said earlier, we already have great partnerships with companies such as Docomo, KDDI, and SoftBank. Your next question was about HTML and uh, Flash and Apple, and I'm sure that's a question on multiple uh, people's minds. So first, with respect to authoring, we will provide authoring for any format, and we will be the world's best provider of authoring tools, irrespective of what format people want to author for. Creative Suite 5 already supports uh, authoring for HTML. HTML and Flash will coexist, and we will deliver an integrated workflow for people to be able to author in any format that they want. We welcome the innovation in HTML. We think Flash still plays a very significant role in ensuring cross-platform, cross-device, cross-OS fidelity, as Paul mentioned. And we will continue to drive innovation in Flash. Flash is used today for animation and interactivity, for video, for casual gaming, for rich internet applications, as Rob showed. And we have to continue to innovate for 3D games, for graphics, and we will continue to innovate on Flash. With, with respect to partners, there is going to be open ecosystems that emerge and closed systems. And we're very pleased to work with any partner who wishes to get Flash on any screen, anywhere in the world. Apple has chosen not to support this open platform and so we have decided that we would work with the numerous partners who wish to support Flash in all of its power, such as Google with Android, Palm with WebOS, Nokia with their operating systems, RIM with the BlackBerry platform, and many others, including, as I said earlier, the, our partners in Japan. And so it's time for us to continue to innovate and work with partners who wish to see this innovation on their devices. Our strategy, as we've described, is to enable developers and publishers to author content and distribute it in highest fidelity across all devices, including platforms like Apple's. Today, our technologies are broadly used accepted on Apple's PC platform, Mac. On smartphone and iPad platforms, we have followed what our strategy has been in providing enablement and capability for our designer and publisher customers and for end users to have the opportunity to experience the most compelling content and applications on any platform or device, including those from Apple in the mobile arena. Apple has decided, as Shantanu mentioned, to close their platforms to make it more difficult 
for content creators and publishers to distribute to that environment. They are also choosing in doing so to limit choice for end users or customers for where and how they can interact with content across devices. Our strategy and belief is that choice, breadth of reach, efficiency in being able to author once and publish broadly is what the industry and users are looking for. And our strategy is focused and committed on delivering on that proposition. We will continue to innovate in that direction, and as Shantanu said, for the broad set of players who are similarly motivated and committed, we will rapidly bring innovations and capabilities to the market. And for those who choose to have closed platforms, it will be more difficult for users and publishers to be able to run their businesses as they would like on a common platform and technologies. The one thing I'll add with respect to your second question is when we think about CS5, it is probably the most compelling product that we have delivered in the company's history. When you looked at some of the magic that was shown earlier with features like content aware film or roto brush or puppet warp, which I don't think we had an opportunity to show today, it has absolutely blown away our customers and the early reviews that we've seen for the product. We are extremely confident of the reception that CS5 has received and no one feature is going to impact what we believe will be the commercial success of CS5. And so we're looking forward to getting it in the hands of our customers and being able to see the wonderful creative things that they are going to do to bring their ideas to life. Around the Amateur's business and, and uh, the question about some of the SDKs and, and being locked out. For us, I think the way that we've always approached this is complexity is really good for our business. And the more confliction there is out there, the more complexity there is for publishers, the better it's been for our business. Because if you think about from a publisher standpoint, they're trying to figure out, should I make these apps? Should I make apps for all the different platforms? Do I have to make apps for all these different tablets? Do I have to make apps for uh, you know, all the different ways that our customers interact with whether it's an application or the website or a mobile website or a kiosk. And the only way to understand how effective all of these different, these different contact points with your customers are is to have analytics from a third party that's independent of everything else that's going on. And so on the one hand, you know, the fact that Apple's closing their system, we know it's not good for the publishers. We know it's not good for the content creators. And uh, you know, there's, there's a window where they're gonna get away with it, but at the same time, it's great for our business. It grows our business. And it certainly doesn't hurt us relative to the competition. Because if they're blocking, they're blocking everyone out, everyone's in the same boat. And so that doesn't, uh, you know, all that does is actually, I think, um, what it does is makes all of the publishers and the content creators that much more uh, convicted in terms of their decisions around making sure that they have multiple alternatives. And so closed systems, they only are successful for short periods of time. And over the long haul, it's just gonna grow our business. And I think you know, the fact that uh, we're the second largest software as a service company from a revenue standpoint, or the largest from a network standpoint, and we're only a small part of Adobe, Adobe's overall business, that really points to the opportunity that Adobe has for the long term. Yeah, the first one around the packager technology, um, you're correct in your assessment that we will um, ship the packager technology with uh, CS5 here in Japan beginning in the end of May. Um, however, we will not continue to invest in that particular uh, development technology uh, for the packager itself. We have other things in the works that we're thinking about, but uh, that is not one that we will continue to invest in, so you're correct in that assessment. 